surprised she had not yet opened her parasol inside the store for fear of getting misted, or just to pull off Mary Poppins' routine. Anyway, she got a hold of some fruits and nuts, a bottle of wine, cheese and fancy crackers, and headed out the store with her own bag, environmentally conscious, I suppose. Then she put her parasol up and I followed her up Vernon Street toward Piedmont in the money part of town. I had no need to hide. She wasn't especially aware of her surroundings and the parasol mostly blocked her view of me except when she stopped on the hill to rest or look at somebody's garden, which she compared mercilessly against her own, priding herself on her techniques. Most people have no idea how to space their bulbs, she thought, nor the slightest clue about how to stagger perennials and annuals. She raised her nose and tipped her umbrella to one side to prevent eyesore in places where an entire yard was simply criminal in her estimation due to failures in mulching or weeding or trimming back hedges the way she thought hedges ought to be cut. I came quite close to her from time to time, and beneath her nasty and thick corrupted perfumes I could taste what I wanted. The tangy energetic. I wasn't sure where we were exactly, meandering through the neighborhood, just like the grocery aisles, but I simply had to have it. As she leaned over a flower bed in someone's garden which had been dug out and subset into the ground, looking around and seeing we were alone, I ran upon her and pushed her over. I grabbed her parasol as she was falling inside the border of hedge and jumped in after her holding the parasol above us to conceal us as I laid hands upon her and began to draw it out of her. It doesn't take long. She was afraid of the sun, this one, afraid of the sun, the giver of life, and below me she was petrified and could not speak. Her mouth open, but no words falling out. She had lost all senses but sight, and the color drained from her face. Poor thing, but I needed it bad. I held her down as she seized up and up again. Nothing could be done about the situation, no matter how ruthless I appeared in the taking. Her groceries had spilled out around us, and the soft cheese was crushed beneath us, and was rather smelly mixed with her perfume, but who cares? I met her eyes with the greatest of calm, and counted all the crowns in her mouth, gold-capped. Boy, was she rich! But I wouldn't need any of it, for the greatest wealth of all, and what I had been after, began to course through my blood and give me strength. Once I had enough, I left her peaceful lying there, quite sure she would live, as she was still breathing, and simply in shock and I positioned the parasol on the grass there, between her head and the sun, so she might awaken hours later without sunburn to her face, presuming she were to awaken at all. I lay her out like she was resting there in the garden, still life with parasol, although by the looks of her anybody would know otherwise. For what woman about town lets herself get all stained by her lawn in her fancy clothes? Looking back, I sure hoped she would make it, but we cannot always tell. What with my intoxication, walking the streets in the aftermath, I completely lost my head and left my bicycle behind. That was yesterday. Today, I was back on Harrison Street and thirsting for more. Someone like my tea party candidate, whose cherry I essentially picked, and God knows what became of her. I tried to ferret out a quick charge off the perpetual energetic in the dreadful building Hendricks led me to, an all but gutted former home of Catholic charity. You can bet I was pretty unhappy my wheels had been jacked. The loss would be temporary, however, for easily did I strike upon the agitated energy that oozes out of a thief after a score. <laughs>